All right, hi, I'm Jason with Accio, and we're gonna show you how to create a sample Google Sheet uh, and upload an Accio and do some forecasting. So what format do we need our data in? I have a simple format here, that's my weekly data of sales numbers, so what week it is, so one week at a time. Um, you could do daily, you could do hourly, you could do monthly, yearly, whatever you want. Uh, but you have to have a time column, uh, typically, or a date column to do forecasting. Um, and then customers, how many customers did I have? It's kind of some funny numbers in there, that's okay. What, what, what was the weather? Anything else that might have, effect, might have affected my sales? Um, I wanna put in here, I only have weather and temperature, and then the actual sales for the business. Now, this is all fictitious data, and this might be used if you're going trying to go back in time, project the future. Um, maybe um, I could put in something like this, how many trucks do I have? How many employees do I have? How many hours were worked? All those things might go into your business and have your attributes. You'd wanna have those across the top and the data going down. So tabular data is what we're working with. Once that's there, I just go back to Accio, hit create new flow. I've already connected my Google Sheets. It asked me to connect a data set. I'm gonna connect my sales data set. That's the name of that sheet if you didn't catch it. I only have one sheet uh, in that workbook um, and it's gonna pull it in. So live data is connected. Um, I only had 52 rows. I could always make more rows, but a few things we've already done for you is we look here and we say, well, um, is there any data that's directly correlated? There isn't, right? We say a number of customers doesn't directly correlate with anything in your data set, um, but there are some relationships there. Um, this is showing up as categorical data. I actually want that as a, a number. I don't think I had any decimals, so I'm just gonna say it's a number by itself. Um, and this looks fine to me. Now, if I do, did need to do anything, maybe there's some interesting data in here. Um, instead of raining, I want rain. Instead of uh, blizzard, I'm just gonna count that as snow. Um, something like that I could do. Uh, or look at this, my temperatures, those are a little bit funny, aren't they? Look at that, those temperatures are a little bit funny. Um, so let's do this. I just remember how to spell temperature. Somewhere between, um, let's say 25 and 80. Again, fictitious data, so I'm just using chat data prep just to clean up my data a little bit for my forecast. There we go. So it goes through and says, well, any of those values that were too low, it tells me kind of the spread of what it's gonna do. I'm gonna say, apply transform. There we go. So now if I look at my, it's not an ID column, this one should be a number. Again, I'll just double check that. Category is a weather, perfect. So now if I click on that, I can see, yeah, it's closely correlated to weather, but not exactly. And let's say that makes sense. So you would wanna input your data this way. Um, now we can explore the data a little bit and we say things like what are the average number of customers per week? Show me a bar plot of sales by week if you wanted to do that. Um, that's not what this is about. We're gonna get to a forecast, but I'm gonna let this one visualization run. There we go. You see I copied the data, so that's why it looks like this. Very, very easy giveaway of data that's been copied and pasted from cell to cell. And now if I go to predict, I'm actually gonna choose forecast, predict tab, but I'm gonna choose forecast. I'm gonna choose my time series, which is week in this case. You could have days, hours, minutes, years, whatever you want. I don't have an ID field. What am I trying to predict? It's sales. Um, I don't, I, I'm gonna go out 30% of the data that I have. So it'll go out um, about three months, right? So about, not quite three months, but two and a half months. I have 12 months worth of data, so it should go out, um, well, about three months. Yeah, actually, that's right, three and a half months. And then aggregate data points, I don't need any aggregation. I could have it go hourly, weekly, that sort of thing, but it's it's weekly already. And then training mode fastest. So I'm gonna create, create predictive model. See, it's extremely fast. The great thing about this too, is if I wanna create another data set, let's say I, I, I say, well, this is best case scenario. I can, I can just go up here and say to copy this flow and I'll make another one. So I'm, I'm gonna show you this before I do it, but I'll show you how to copy the flow and then, I'll, um, and then I'll come back to it. I was gonna duplicate the tab to show you. So here's my prediction. If I look out in the future, here's what it says it's going to do. I can zoom in on it just a little bit and it says, well, here's your prediction in the past and then here's what it's going to be in the future as you look forward in the, the coming, uh, like I said, three months or so, three and a half months. So if I want to go back out, I can zoom back out. I can show my confidence level as well, which is pretty good, right? That's showing the variance of how confidence the model is. And if I really want to use this, I can download the data set. That's going to go. I can upload that. It's a CSV in this case. I can upload that right back to Google Sheets and start to use it and use it as a visualization. In fact, that's what I would actually do. So to show you how to duplicate, this is the best case scenario. May want to modify this. Let's go back here and say, there's the one I just created. I'm going to say duplicate flow. There it is. I'm gonna go back here and say, worst case, ooh, case. Now I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna say chat data prep. 
uh, reduce sales by 10 to 50 percent randomly. So I'm going to say reduce the sales by 10 to 50 percent randomly. It's going to go through and reduce the sales. So mul multiply the sales column by data set by a random number by 0.5 and 0.9, effectively reducing the sales by 10. That's actually a better way of putting it, so it corrected me a little bit, but I don't have to know SQL or Python or anything like that to do it. I'll apply it. Now when I forecast this, my sales are going to be down. So you have a best case and worst case scenario, and we just did that in a couple of minutes. Now um, let's say I went ahead and go back to forecast. It's going to make me uh, reforecast, of course, and we would let this run. But I want to play with the data that I just forecast. I just forecast some data. Let's uh, go do that. So if I go back here and I say create new flow, now I can choose table. I'm going to choose to upload my data set. I'm going to pause it here while I grab my data set. There we go. Okay, just upload that same data set. It says here's my week and my predicted sales, right? So I only went out three and a half months. But now if I go to explore, I can say, please chart the data in a bar chart. I can now visualize the data I just created. I know we saw a visualization before in a forecast, but maybe I've manipulated it. Maybe I've played with it. Maybe I've shared it around a little bit. Now I'm forecasting it, or I'm charting it right in front of you. I can save this to a report. And again, I didn't have to go offline and say it's just CSV. This could all be done through Google Sheets through our integration. So a few things to look at. I think I showed a bunch of ways to manipulate your data for, for some fictitious data if you need to, to do some forecasting on things you don't have or fill in some gaps. But if you do have your sales data, this is a great way to see what's going to happen in the future. A couple of things I didn't get into were if I actually go back and look at my worst case scenario, I think that just finished because it's really quick. Um, yeah, there we go. The things that actually affected it quarterly, monthly, you can see how my sales go down in certain months, right? My leading indicators, uh, when the temperature decreases by 20, it goes down, right? Nobody wants their dog to get uh, washed or their hair to get cut or whatever my sales are. Um, it involved it when the uh, temperature decreases, it turns out. So things like that are insights you get with the platform as well.